What's up guys, this is John Hammond. So in the last video we were taking a look at Flask for Python, and we essentially made pretty much just identical to the example application from their, their Hello World program and the Quick Start guides and the online documentation. So now I want to try and move on to some other stuff, uh, but first I want to take note of debug mode, because it's pretty awesome for us as developers while we're learning and experimenting with Flask. Uh, debug mode will allow us to essentially work in a development environment that allows us to do some pretty cool things. For one thing, it activates the debugger, so if things go wrong in your program, you can take a look at the variables and execute code uh, while still being inside the application. And the most important thing I think it does for us is it will reload our application if it sees a change in the source code. Um, that's pretty awesome while we were trying to develop and test things on the fly. So. It explains how to do this with some environment variables, um, but another notion is just turning on debug or setting flask debug equal to one if you want to use debug mode uh, without being defined in a development environment. You can do that with those environment variables on the command line, but another option is in your source code, just say debug equals one or true as a keyword argument to your application.run script. So before I do that, I wanted to showcase how this looks when you don't specify that you'll notice that debug mode is off here and we're in that uh, running on that same application. But if I were to change debug equal to true, suddenly we will have, okay, debug mode is on and we will be able to restart as we see changes in the source code. So now that we have debug mode on, it will reload our program automatically for us. That's pretty cool. There is a strong note though, because the interactive debugger um, will essentially stop your program and show errors whenever things go wrong, it gives you means to test your code and execute uh, actual arbitrary code. That is not good <laughs> uh, if it's kind of found in the wrong hands, right? So it can be a huge security risk if you leave it on for something that you actually put on the internet because you don't want to just give your the, the users like little remote code execution on your on your web server in Python. So that can that's bad. Do not use debug mode when you're putting something for real on the internet. Okay, cool. The next thing I wanted to get into was moving into URL routing because we talked about that application route earlier in the in the previous video, but now we can expand that. Let's say we wanted to be um, have a new route called say hello or say hello, and it would be like hello YouTube. And remember, we'll have to change the name of this function because we don't want it to match the same as the other one. That will have an error here. Now, the moment I save this, you'll see that detection or that change being found in the debugger. So if I were to access this page right here, 127001 or localhost running on that development port 5000, we have hello world as usual, but we also have say hello, which we can read. And it says hello YouTube, just like that. So say we didn't want to greet just YouTube, we wanted to greet anyone per in particular. And that's pretty neat because we have the option to use variables inside of the URL. There's some notes here in the documentation that explain how you can use it, but essentially it's just denoting with greater than and less than symbols for the variable that you want inserted into that URL. It can be anything, but you'll have to pass that in as an argument to your function here. So if I wanted to say... Uh, say hello to someone, we can have say hello, and then username can be name, and they'll take in this argument name. So we will say hello with a formatted string based off name. And I will change some of these document strings here, even though they're annoying. Sorry, okay, cool. So. Now you'll see those changes being loaded, and you'll see when we're actually loading pages, that's denoted and, and captured in the log of our server. So that's pretty neat and cool to watch um, if you are doing anything for either maybe like a pen test, if you're trying to see if you have an active connection, it's good to log all those connections here. So let's go ahead and check out that page one more time. Now, now not only can I say hello on its own, but I can say hello to like John and it says, hello, John. And you'll see my name is supplied as a variable and we can have anything in there like Doug. Hey, Doug. <laughs> okay. That documentation explains a little bit more where you can specify specific formats and specific types. Like if you wanted specifically a string, 
that's the default. In this case, we didn't specify. It's just a name was cast to a string. Uh, integer, float, etc., etc. That's an option that we have here. And remember, these forward slashes, you can like have as many of these as you want to anyone with a lot of slashes. Like You can build out essentially a path or what looks like directories or how you'd normally see it if you were trying to write something in PHP, but you're doing it in Python and you can define whatever URL you particularly want because Flasks believe, Flask believes that URLs should be beautiful. They should be simple and clean without any file extension like .php or .aspx, all that crap. Uh, so you can have fine-tuned fine, fine -tuned control and a lot of granular specification in this, and that's a pretty neat thing. So keep in mind those variables you want to pass to an, uh, to a URL. If you're trying to keep track of a unique identifier or something, that has to be passed as a variable to your function as well. So neat. Thank you guys for sticking with me. Um, I do need to give a little shout out to my supporters. So super huge props to these guys because they send me a little bit of love and I cannot thank you enough for that. Um, every little bit helps. If $1 a month on Patreon, we'll give you a shout out just like this at the very end of the video. $5 a month gives you some early access to videos that I record on YouTube uh, before they actually get released. So if you did like this video, please do like, maybe comment if you're willing to subscribe and check me out on Patreon. Thanks so much, guys. See you soon.